more than a hundred islands, with only 15 inhabited. By humans, anyway. Tami what? Tami Noris. Tami Noris, what does that mean? Right, it's just a Shetland name for the puffin. There's a Scandinavian twang in the air. Shetland's closer to Norway than mainland Scotland. So you're a Viking, that's why you named it Valhalla, right? <laughs> yes. These islands are the most northerly region of Britain, and they don't let you forget it. Back in the 70s, flares and rebellion hit Shetland. It was one of only two places in the UK to vote against staying in what was then the EEC. Well, this is the um, Shetland Times from the 13th of June, 1975, decisive no to Europe from fishermen. And you've been news editor for 10 years, you're born and bred Shetland. Yeah. Have you seen, you know, since this time, all those years ago, has Shetland changed a lot? Has the community changed, people's identity? Well, the biggest change in Shetland since that time is the onset of the oil industry, which wasn't, uh, was just had been spoken about in 1975. A lot more opportunities for jobs for people up here. And uh, as many people probably for a long time were employed in the oil industry, is the uh, fishing industry. Good afternoon, this is Richard Forbes with the news for the Shetland Isles. News nights on the referendum road. In Shetland, the climate's so changeable you can get a month of weather in just a few hours. But how changeable are Shetlanders' attitudes to the EU four decades on? Okay. New industries have grown up since the fishermen swung the vote. Shetland's pioneering tidal power and Fred Gibson's firm, which has received some EU funding, is making the fibreglass blades. The first one's actually up and running at the moment, and hopefully as we speak it's actually producing um, electricity which is going on to the local grid. So you'll be voting to stay in? Oh, absolutely. I think it's going to be very interesting what's going to happen here this time. I can see exactly why they voted no last time, and that was purely down the fishing industry. That's still important in Shetland, but it employs far fewer people these days. When I was at school, there'd at least be three or four other pupils within my class whose fathers were going out probably every day to go fishing. It's funny because I asked that same question to my children quite recently, and they said that they didn't actually know anyone. And then one of them said, oh, he thought that somebody was a fish father was a fisherman in his year group. So that has completely changed. Two ferries and a drive from the warehouse in the capital, Lerwick, is the island of Unst, the most northerly inhabited isle in the UK. Visitors come for the puffins that frequent these parts. But it's too early in the season and the closest I was going to get was the UK's most northerly post office and its special franking stamp. They all want to get their cards franked with Britain's most northerly postmark on it. Back in 1975, the Shetland Islands did vote no to joining in the beginning. Do you think that it will go that way again here? I can't see that happening. Do you think people will vote to stay in? I think they will. I think they will. What's changed, do you think? Why do you think that is? <sighs> I think the unknown is if you're not in it, of what would happen. Is the unknown. Project Fear is working. Yeah, yeah. Many of the 600 souls living on Unst are descended from the Vikings who raided and then settled Shetland. Every year, the Upheli R Festival sees locals set fire to a replica Viking longship and generally revel in their heritage, with one person nominated as chief Viking. So where does one find a Viking when they're not burning ships? There's certainly a lot of Viking blood still in Shetland. Sunny Priest runs Britain's most northerly brewery, called Valhalla after the Viking heaven, appropriate for a man who was chief Viking 11 years ago. He wants out. We're closer to Oslo than we are to London. Yeah. Do you look at that model, the Norway model of how they deal with the EU and think we should be like that? Yeah, well, that's what I think. I've just come back from being in Norway and the place is absolutely pristine and they seem to have plenty of money there. There's never been the banking crisis there that we went through. But they don't have a place at the table to argue their point when it comes to the EU. Do they need a place at the table? They're doing perfectly well without that place.
tourism is a big part of the Shetland economy. There's just so much fun to be had. That's the Atlantic, and this is supposed to be the only place in the UK where you can throw a stone from there over there into the North Sea. So I'm going to have a go. Hit the road. Hello. Hello. Can I order a fish and chips? Yes, certainly. Please. Take away. One island south of Unst is, you got it, the UK's most northerly fish and chip shop. Are you veering one way or the other at all? Have you heard any arguments that you like? Um, not really. I've just kind of stay away from the subject because it causes fights. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. This is the most northerly fish and chip shop in our country. How do you think everyone here would feel if they opened a fish and chip shop on Unst? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but you'd be gutted. <laughs> We'd have to change a lot of signs. <laughs> Agricultural subsidies often put farmers in the Remain camp, but not Martin Burgess, out tending his sheep in what must in winter be extreme conditions. What is it about these hardy islanders with their Norse heritage? Shetland has, a, I think, a more of a global outlook. We have our oil industry, which is a global industry, where fishing industry is right across the globe. Uh, so looking at little Europe, there's, there's not, not an area that would be that's really for us. As a council vet, Hilary Burgess is neutral. Since I've been here, you've seen the profitability <coughs> of these farms go down, the farms and crofts, and people, people struggling to make a living. And at the same time, the amount of bureaucracy, the amount of legislation and regulations that people have to keep up with is always increasing. So people are, are really living in fear of that. I don't think that's an overstatement. Do you feel European? No. I wouldn't say I was European at all, no. <laughs> You're laughing. He's not a European. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. <laughs> In this pub amongst the tourists, Shetlanders were far more positive about the EU. Not one of the 15 locals I spoke to planned to vote out, including one woman who back in the 70s was even arrested protesting against the EEC. It did reinforce my belief that we didn't want anything to do with this Europe place, if that's what it was. No free speech and throw people into cars and so on. And but you've changed your mind now? Totally, yeah. Because Absolutely. you can see the benefits? I can see the benefits and I also feel a sense of belonging. I've gone as far north as it's possible to drive in the UK and reached one end of the referendum road. Shetland's one of the country's most remote communities, but it's also amongst the most globally minded. Things have certainly moved on since 1975, but no one's sure in which direction.